This is a huge honour and a wonderful surprise, and I'd like to thank the Walkley Foundation for giving me this award. This was a story a lot of Australians did not want to watch or know about. It was a story that uncovered some very disturbing behaviour by our most elite soldiers. And it showed for the first time a war crime caught on camera. It was one of our SAS soldiers killing an unarmed, frightened Afghan man cowering on the ground. This was footage that later became evidence for the Inspector General of Defence in his groundbreaking report on war crimes. And the other thing this story revealed to the military was that some of these men alleged to have pulled the trigger were still serving in the Special Forces. This story and others I have done on alleged Australian war crimes have drawn a very mixed response. There has been praise for us shining a light into the dark corners of Afghanistan and into the dark soul of some of our military. But there's also been a lot, a lot of anger that we dared to question our most revered soldiers. Online, in emails, and even in phone calls, I've been called a traitor, unpatriotic scum, and a lot worse. And there have been threats, including from a guy who called me and said I should be shot. Now, this rubbish doesn't bother me. I'm not being brave by ignoring that, because the true courage has been shown by the SAS insiders and whistleblowers who have spoken to me and to other journalists. And it's been one of those whistleblowers, former SAS Signals Intelligence Officer Braden Chapman, who I want to thank above all tonight. Braden, to his personal risk, agreed to come on Four Corners to speak about the unlawful killings he witnessed in Afghanistan, as well as detail the toxic culture inside the SAS of bashings and drinking and other misdemeanours. Many other insiders who weren't identified also helped me with this story. I would also thank our team of Afghan fixers who often put their own safety at risk to get our interviews with the families of the Afghan victims. They are truly brave journalists, and a key part of the story would not have been able to be told without them. I'd like to thank the entire ABC Investigations team. We are relatively a new unit, but I think we have demonstrated the ABC's ongoing commitment to quality investigative journalism. Led by Joe Pacini, herself a highly experienced and Walkley award-winning journalist who has been on the Afghan story for years. Thanks also to John Lyons, who is the head of long form and investigative journalism at the ABC. He's supported this story and our team relentlessly. So too did our news director, Gavin Morris. Thanks to those who contributed to this story. Rory Callanan, my offsider, Alex Blucher, Wayne Harley, Mary Fallon, Simon Brinjolfson, and my great mate, the peerless cinematographer, Louis Eriglou. Thanks also to Four Corners, led by Sally Neighbour and Morag Ramsey, for backing this story to the hilt and giving us a platform to tell it. Thanks as well to the digital teams at Four Corners and ABC Investigations. These stories aren't easy to tell, nor do they leave you once they're broadcast. Just ask Dan Oakes. Dan and Sam Clark broke the Afghan file stories that pushed this yarn well along. But it came at a price for them, with the ridiculous spectre of criminal charges hanging over their heads and raids on the ABC. It was a shameful way of responding to genuine investigative journalism. Just ask Chris Masters and Nick McKenzie, who are, who are fighting a tough defamation battle, all because they dared to dig into alleged war crimes in Afghanistan and break stories on what happened over there. It's a battle they are still fighting. The story of Australian war crimes in Afghanistan has been largely exposed by fine investigative journalism, collaborative journalism, journalism that just yesterday was vindicated by the shocking Brereton report. This is an example of why we need quality investigative journalism in this country. In summing up, I'd like to thank my family, my wife Susie and my daughters Nina, Kate and Eva, as well as my dad. They've all had to put up with my absences and the irregular hours that go with doing stories like this. I just wish my mum could have been here to see this. She would have told everyone in Toowoomba. Finally, I want to dedicate this award to the families of those left behind. Those people in Afghanistan whose family members were killed, often brutally. Victims like Dad Muhammad, that poor young Afghan man cowering in the wheat field as an SAS soldier loomed above him. It has been a privilege to tell their stories. Thank you.